So as you know, a miracle is something extraordinary, uncommon, not mm -hmm. regular, not the standard. Yeah. So in your God idea, it should be supernatural. So this is what I love about this idea of the miracle mentality. If you're a mother, do it with a miracle mentality. If you work at a bank, do it with a miracle mentality. Whatever you do, you should be doing it with a miracle mentality. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hello friends, what can you do when you feel there's just no coming back from what you've been through? Well, my guest today knows firsthand what it takes to change the trajectory of your life. You can leave defeat behind. Acclaimed author, speaker, and life coach, Tim Story is well known for inspiring and motivating people of all walks of life. His new book, The Miracle Mentality, has become a worldwide movement. Quincy Jones calls Tim the voice of inspiration to this generation. He's seen regularly on nationally syndicated radio and television shows, but today he's on Inside Voice. Tim, you are my dear friend, and it is such an honor and so fun to have you here with us today. Thanks for taking the time. Good to be with you. So I'm a fan of this show in this format. I mean, you've always been good in talk. Mm. I'm loving this show. And uh, it's a privilege to be on today. Thank you, my friend. It's always great to talk with you. We've we've actually sat and had dinner quite a few times. We love to sit and have Thai food, and yes. it, you're just a lot of fun. To uh, you know, my husband and I. I actually met you through Paul, and we appreciate what you're doing. And uh, I just want our audience to really kind of get a feel for who is Tim Story and what does he do, and and how can he help me? I mean. Tell us a little bit about your background and your story and how it really all began. What inspired you to want to invest into other people? Yeah, a little bit of my story is uh, as, a, as a young person, uh, somebody invited my, my father to a church and we had been raised in the Catholic church. Uh, I was super, super young at the time. I was only four years of age. But they took us to a church called Meldy Land Christian Center in Anaheim, uh, as yeah. you know, was a very famous church. And so we started going to Meldy Land Christian Center, and uh, we were there for many, many years. And I got introduced to the things of God, the ways of God, the charismatic movement. And then after that, went to a church called First Assembly of God in Whittier, California. Um, and I... I just like church. Like, you know, mm. I was the kid that when they took me to Sunday school, I believed the stories. Yeah. <laughs> built the ark. I'm like, okay. Right. <laughs> Don't have that swallowed up. All right. Uh, come on. Yeah. So, um, even though I like sports and I liked um, humor, I, I really got into the things of God, Brenda, at an early age. And mm. I feel like uh, God just started showing me at an early age that, I was going to somehow, some way, help lift people up. That, that's always been my personality. And, then, and wasn't there a time in your life when there was a teacher that really made an impact and kind of ignited a, a, a fire that, in my opinion, that was something that really changed your outlook? Uh, what happened there with that teacher? Yeah, what, what was this is so awesome about like teachers. Um, so my mother was very distracted because she she had five children and she worked at a place called Winchell's Donut Shop. Have you ever heard of Winchell's? Oh, wow. Oh, of course. <laughs> and so she was just very distracted. So in my in my house, I never heard anything about like any of us are going to try to go to college or there was, there was just no talk about things like that. It was kind of like surviving and getting from one place to the, the next. But there was a teacher in sixth grade that said to me, Timmy, can you stay after class? And I'll never forget, Brenda was at the end of school uh, and the whole class went like, ooh, like he's probably in trouble. <laughs> so the teacher said to me, he says, Timmy, he says, I think you are. And I love this story because I really didn't know what he was going to say next. Mm -hmm. I think you are a good dancer because I saw that he was at the <laughs> dance contest and I won. You're a good basketball player because he would go to the games. He goes, I think you are brilliant. And because you are brilliant, I want to see if you want to start checking out books from my personal library. Wow. To think that this sixth grade teacher branded me brilliant 
I'd never heard that word come towards me. And uh, I just took it and I just put it on me. I didn't know everything it meant, but I took what he said and I labeled myself what this man said. Yeah. That's incredible. And, you know, what a good word, both for moms who have a lot of kids and they're concerned about, you know, I'm, I'm, my time is so spread out and spread so thin. Um, but, you know, I think if you pray for your kids, God has a way of investing in their future and, and uh, changing the narrative sometimes. And what a good word for teachers right now, because, uh, you know, the statistics are really on the rise for kids that are dealing with anxiety at the yeah. level that businessmen were dealing with back in the 60s, Tim. Yeah, but I like what you just said, because uh, for all of you that are watching that have children, sometimes it, 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 it gets overwhelming because we're competing with yeah. the, you know, the, the iPhone and TikTok and Instagram and all the other things on social media. But to think, as you said, that, you know, God can use people we don't uh, expect sometimes, like like my teacher, uh, to really be used by God to brand me brilliant and then to take me on a journey. Because I remember yeah. uh, he gave me three options of books to read, and I read one on the life of Michelangelo. And one would say, well, why was that so interesting? Because I read about this guy who was very normal, who had a lot of challenges but he had something within him that he knew he was supposed to do something fantastic. So I, mm -hmm. I, I begin to relate to people like that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Well, so your life, you know, obviously you had a journey, you've had your, your highs and your lows, your successes and your failures. And through all of that, you have been equipped to learn how to, um, I guess, deal with, you know, those, those narratives that want to keep you spiraling downward and be able to make those comebacks, be able to, uh, come back even stronger than you were before because you're, uh, you've learned something. Is, is that correct? No doubt about it. You know, as I, as I have become older in Christianity, I, I have found that really there, there's nobody, uh, that's ever walked the planet that has not had setbacks. And right. as you know, Ecclesiastes chapter three says there's a time and a season for everything. And then it says there's a time to be silent and a time to speak, mm -hmm. a time to tear and a time to mend. Now, I've had the times of silence where I feel at times I silence myself, maybe by choices that I made, I silence myself. But there were times where it seemed like life just sil silenced me, like tragedies happened, people dying in my family, et cetera. But how about this thing about there's a time to tear and a time to mend? And I think so many people, they count themselves out way too early, just way too early that maybe mm -hmm. you went through a divorce in your early 30s, or maybe you had some type of financial setback in your 40s. But the, the beautiful thing is, is that God truly is the author and the finisher mm, of our faith. Come on. Mm. And Brenda, as you teach all the time, he, he designed us to finish strong. So, you know, this yeah. Tim story journey, I thought it'd be a lot easier than it is because I'm, I'm quite uh, into humor and I, I enjoy right. life. <laughs> I've always just been a happy kid, but yeah. I've been to some turmoil but I tell you, it, it, it's it's made me a more empathetic person. Mm -hmm. and I, I would say to you as a friend, I'm more at peace than I've ever been in my entire life. Mm. That's it. I love that. Yeah. It, that, and I can certainly relate. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that we don't get the beauty without the pain. Yeah. Uh, there's no such yeah. thing as, I mean, the kind of beauty that, everyone seems to be seeking after uh, is really kind of a, it's a deceptive, it, it's seductive, but it's, it's deceptive yeah. because we, we don't like the idea of suffering. We don't like the idea of having to go through something. We want to go over it, around it and avoid all that. But the truth really is that the things that, you know, if we take that pain and we bury it because we don't want to deal with it, then what we bury alive, we're giving power to. And so there yeah. is process involved in healing and in 
becoming. And I love that you are just such an example that you also have, you're not just keeping this within the four walls of the church per se, even though you are a pastor of a church and you have a mm-hmm. wonderful outreach there <clears throat> in California, Yeah. but you have really taken this message into the communities that don't necessarily have a faith or have different types of faith. And you've been able to bring um, this understanding of what a miracle mentality really is. And I want to go there. What is, uh, you know, my, my first question would be, what's the difference as you're explaining this to people between a miracle mentality and a fantasy mindset? Because I think there's two different, there are two, two different things. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. In fact, the Bible says he who works his land shall have abundance. Mm-hmm. So the word abundance, as you know, means overflowing more than enough. But whoever chases fantasies lacks mm-hmm. wisdom. That's Proverbs twelve eleven. I think mm-hmm. we live in a culture worldwide that chases fantasies. Yeah. Um, I've now spoken in 77 countries. Uh, within two months, I will have spoken to 79 because I'm going to Switzerland in two weeks and also then to Italy. So that'll be my 78th and 79th country. And what I find around the world is people are chasing fantasies. So you make yeah. a good point there. So what I'm looking for, Brenda, is I'm looking for what is the God idea and not the good idea? There's a difference between mm. a good idea and a God idea. So I wrote that book in 1988. So, but once I have that God idea, now I need a God idea mindset. A God idea mindset is a miracle mentality. Because mm-hmm. everything that God is, is about miracles. So as you know, a miracle is something extraordinary, uncommon, not mm-hmm. regular, not the standard. Yeah. So in your God idea for you and for my God idea, it should be supernatural. So this is what I love about this idea of the miracle mentality. If you're a mother, do it with a miracle mentality. If you work at a bank, do it with a miracle mentality. Whatever you do, you should be doing a miracle mentality. Come on. And, you know, I think that's probably one of the things that my mom really did right. She always had a miracle mentality. Now, not everything she did was right. I mean, we're all a product of our parents' uh, successes and their failures and mistakes. But, you know, I have, I learned that early on. And I think that's probably despite some of the pitfalls and the bad choices that I made and the, the abuses in my past and, you know, some of the victim mentality, even Tim, I had this thing deep down inside. It was those imaginal cells, you know, that God gives to the caterpillar that wants to be the butterfly. It was the thing that wanted to believe. And I said, there's something great that God wants to do through me and in me. But I had to realize that he had to do it first in me before that could really be fruitful and manifest outwardly. You can't give away what you don't have. Yeah. And uh, this really kind of brings me to another, another question I want to throw at you because I want to talk about some difficult stuff. Mm -hmm. What is your idea of, excuse me, what's your thought about how narcissistic our culture really has become and how narcissism really plays into that fantasy uh, kind of a uh, mentality. And how do we break away from that mindset? Because I think we're all born with narcissistic traits. I mean, a baby, everything's about that baby. Yes. But, mm-hmm. but it, it's, it's really about maturing and having to grow out of those things. Uh, speak to that for a minute. I think a lot of it is about the type of leaders that we highlight. Um, I remember at 20 years of age going to Sweden and I went to this large church uh, pastored by a guy named Stanley Schoberg. It was a famous church called the City Church. And Mm -hmm. I noticed that on the Saturday when we went and did evangelism, there was this handsome Swede. He was about six foot two Mm -hmm. and he was passing out flyers with the kids. And I just did not get it. And then I went to a place called the Smyrna Church in Gothenburg. And the senior pastor during this evangelism summer stuff, he was out there passing flyers with the kids. And I just had never seen that in wow. like, American churches. 
And what I begin to see is that the real heroes to me are the Mother Teresas. They are the oh, come on, the, the Nelson Mandela's. Mm. They're the guy that pastors a church of a hundred people that still makes hospital visits, and a lot of it is about um, who uh, this culture has uh, decided to highlight. And it's, it's just very incorrect that just because of so many likes on social media mm. or just because you are famous, we've missed it. Let me give an example. I was speaking to some young people about two years ago, and they were from the ages of 18 to 24, and it was at a, at, at a beauty school. Okay, it was, it was actually at a mm. palm school. And I said, um, what do you guys want to be when you get older? And then some said a salon owner. But so many of them said, I want to be a celebrity. Oh, wow. And I stopped this one lady, young lady, and I said, because when, when you say that, what do you mean? She goes, I want to be famous. And uh, I'm going to be famous. I just know I'm mm -hmm. going to be famous. And then I said, in all due respect, why? She goes, just because I want it and I will manifest it. <laughs> and I thought, okay, what has happened that now being a celebrity is like some form of a job, which is not. Mm. Yeah. Or the ultimate pinnacle of success or identity, really. We're talking about an identity issue. You know, uh, it's like one of the things that I had to deal with in my season of just really coming unraveled from projecting all of this success and yeah. doing all of these things that I thought made me feel important I had to really acknowledge that underneath all that was a big mess. And I had to really understand, well, who am I separate of the things that I do? Yes. And I think this is where we have this kind of dangerous um, ideal in our culture that these people that we kind of worship, I mean, we make shows uh, you know, around uh, making them idols. And so, you know, we've really been kind of trained to think this way and we've become fractured in our real relationships. And, and uh, you know, humanity, people are lonely and they're looking at a fake image, something that has been conjured up and uh, created with makeup and lights. And, you know, it's what you see on film is really, it's not real. And yet there's this hunger that people want something authentic, but they keep going back to drink from the cup of fantasy. Yeah. And yeah. that just seems to be the word today. But, you know, at that time of my life, Tim, I, you know, I had built a lot of my identity around being the best singer and performer. I could hold an audience in the palm of my hand. And that was a powerful feeling. Yeah, known for that. Yeah. I love where you're at, Brenda, because mm -hmm. I, I watch what you're doing and, you know, we knew you as a singer. Now we're seeing you as a writer. We're seeing you as a speaker, but you also married a very powerful man who I think mm -hmm. Paul is one of the most creative guys that I've ever met yeah, he is. in my life by, by far, by far. Like, yeah, he really is the best because he can do things uh, from produce direct. He mm -hmm. can write. He can run an entire studio. He knows how to run a, a business. Mm -hmm. And I feel that one of the things that's happening in you is that you are allowing yourself to evolve into what God has for you now. Mm -hmm. yeah. The way I teach this is that, you know, the Bible says, for God knows the end from the beginning and he knows what is yet to come. The yet to come means yet to unfold. And that um, all of us are unfolding. And it's very important that we don't try to direct God how to unfold us in the days to come, in the years to come, because maybe he has something that is a lot better for us. And so mm -hmm. I'm really into my unfolding. I'm into my assignments. Yeah. I don't chase anything mm -hmm. i just truly really want Good. to do my assignments and yeah. if my assignments are considered big by some or medium by some either way i'm good i want to do the god idea assignments that's what i do 
That's powerful. And I think that really means we have to stop comparing ourselves to what somebody over here is doing or this guy over here and start saying, okay, God, what's my lane? Start asking him and leaning in to the, the hard stuff, investing in loving ourselves enough to do the hard work and to say, okay, if this is the vision and the goal that God has placed in me, and these are my gifts, what am I doing with them? So, you know, let's talk about how we get out of the, those, the funk mindset where, you know, we're just kind of spiraling and we feel like we're not going anywhere and we need a miracle, but yeah. you know, what does it take? What are the baby steps even? Yeah, I, I have, I have an answer. I think that we learn three primary ways, education, conversation, and observation. So one of the things that's working in your show, like we're doing today is that we are educating people. Yeah. Secondly, they can learn from the conversation. And I mean this, sometimes we're one conversation away from a brilliant life. If, if you were to look back, Brenda, of so many amazing conversations you've had since your childhood, there are a few that just stand out where you go like, that was a game mm -hmm. changer. Mm -hmm. I remember one night I was with the great Tony Curtis, who was an actor. And we started eating dinner together like once a month. And, you know, because I was already friends with Charlton Heston, who I think your family knows as well. But I was friends with Charlton. I was friends with Jack Lemmon, Walter Matthau. And, but Tony Curtis and I were talking one time and he was talking about fame. Mm -hmm. And he, he just said, Tim, even with making those movies with Marilyn Monroe and all those things I did, he said, the thing I always desired was just peace. I just wanted to be at peace. Mm. I just wanted to like myself. Yeah. So that was a conversation that, that, that touched me. So we learned education conversation. Last one, observation. I am a pro at watching people and looking for their good. Not, not watching them and looking for what's challenging about them. I observe and then I want to emulate people in, in things that I see that I mm -hmm. like, whether mm -hmm. it's their style or their manner or their good listeners. And so I think one way to break out of the funk is re-educate yourself. That's good. Secondly, get involved in better conversations. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, start observing people that are living a life that is a miracle mentality type of life. Yeah, yeah. So good. And I can certainly attest to that because there was that time in my life where I was so absorbed with my pain and my need that I wasn't listening. And, I, you know, I feel like it was really the work of God to get a hold of me on the inside and say, start living outside of yourself mm -hmm. and invest in other people. Listen more. Don't just be thinking about what you need to say next. And, you know, be there for them and invest in people. And as I began to do that, you know, there was this like this law of reciprocity and that started coming back to me. Yes. That even applies to, you know, if you want to marry a, someone that, that really loves you, be the kind of person that you want to marry, you know, like be the kind of friend that you want to have in your life. And, you know, it really is a different way of looking at things, but it works. And so, you know, Good for you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just so thankful for the work that you're doing in a community that is, man, this world is hurting, Tim. Well, Brenda, I say this in, in, um, from a real clear perspective in life, in a very sober mindset that mm -hmm. just thank you, God. What a, what a privilege to um, have God in my life. Mm -hmm. Thank you to those people that took me to Melody Land the people that took me to first assembly mm -hmm. of God, because God, God has really done some beautiful things in my life. And even in some of the painful t things, some I caused, some I did not, but yet I went through. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I'm, o I'm okay yeah. with all of it. Cause right when you think you've been through something, man, we hear some stories out there, right? Oh, it's true. Uh, they go through so much. So I am a, I'm a big advocate of life. I'm a big advocate of eternal life, that we are, that we are eternal. We, we are forever young. 
Yeah. So I, I, I've bought into all this, Brenda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you know, a lot of people, though, they feel stuck and they, they don't have the ability to really see that. So I think this is where mentoring really plays a role. If you have a voice uh, from someone who's seasoned, for, like yourself, who's been down that path, who's a pilgrim, a sojourner. And that's what this show is really about, is sojourners who have walked that journey ahead of us and, and have the wisdom and the insight and the discernment really to be able to say, listen, it, it, what you're seeing is so limited. And, and I'm just going to come alongside you and help you to see it from a larger perspective. One of the things that I like to say is when you see the road from heaven's yeah. perspective, the road is not so difficult anymore. And I think yeah. that does give us strength and it gives us courage, right? Uh, you know, to get unstuck and to not be living this marginalized, limited life. What does it take? What kind of decision does it take? to just change the, the paradigm. So one of the things that I talk about in my book, Miracle Mentality, is that for somebody to turn a setback to a comeback, number one, you have to become awake. Mm -hmm. And me and you have gone through times in our life where we were like sleepwalking through life because of our pain. Good point. So number one, you have to become awake. Secondly, you have to take inventory. And I think that people don't take realistic inventory of their life. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. like, wow, my marriage is really in trouble or being mm -hmm. divorced is difficult and I feel shame or my mindset is not correct or my body is acting up. So number one, you become awake. Secondly, you take inventory, but this is very powerful. Then you have to partner with the right people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so again, I'm so glad you have this show because we can partner with you. We can partner with what you're doing. And some people are really one partner away from stepping into this amazing power. How true is that, right? There is power in partnership. So, you know, you become awake, take inventory, partner with the right people. Then the last thing on this, you gotta have the right principles. Uh, you have to have the right principles in your life. And so again, that's one reason I'm so glad for the faith that both of us were raised in because we can go into the principles of God. Yeah. It gave us a foundation. Yeah. And, you know, I really think that there are some, there's a corrective work. There's a cleansing work that God's doing right now with the church at large, the capital C church. Uh, I'm not speaking of any particular de denomination, but yeah. just the church at large. And, you know, the truth is really, Tim, we're living in a postmodern culture now. And, and so, you know, that changes the paradigm for a lot of people. I think there might be a little denial and, and, uh, lament over that, but, you know, we don't have to be in the seat of power to be able to emanate and resonate what lives within us. It, you know, it's like being the moon. I heard a song earlier. I want to be the moon that reflects the light of the sun. And isn't that what we do? I mean, it, it, we don't have to be uh, talking, you know, churchy talk and, and being strange. But if we are just people being relatable in relationship, building relationships with people, and that's what you do. And I love that about you because it, it breaks down the barriers. It bridges the gaps and it brings people to the table where they can taste and they can see, hey, this is good stuff. I think it is unique. Um, like, as you know, I've, I have the privilege of being a very good friend to Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. And you got to be a real good friend when she invites you to dinner at her house all the time. So mm -hmm. me and her have amazing talks about life, mm -hmm. about fashion, and about God. Yeah. And... Um, I remember asking her one time, just me and her sitting in her backyard, like I said, what is your favorite Christian song? And she said, I surrender all. And wow. people would not expect that Oprah Winfrey is going to say that. Yeah. Because that's a very powerful song. That's about surrendering. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that so many people can see um, some of the folks that I get to be around. And it's so easy to judge them and say, well, they're not as strong as us, or they also teach some other things, but mm -hmm. let's look for the good in people. 
Yeah. And that's what's working for me. And that's why I've been able to see so many people from that world of being big, big stars uh, mm -hmm. come into a deeper walk with God because I'm patient with them. But then again, patient, right. uh, Jesus has been very patient with all of us. Incredible. It, it, one of the things that I felt like God really impressed upon my heart uh, is that, you know, I might be sitting in, on a plane uh, per se uh, at this grocery store or somewhere. And, and I might bump into somebody that's different from me. And I can tell culturally, I can tell just their values are different than mine. But what I began to do is to look for the image of God. It's in every human being. And that's what I want our viewers to hear today. Tim, in the next 30 seconds, I want you to encourage somebody who's listening right now. They're, they're feeling defeated. Just give them an encouraging word. Yes. I really like this one that I've been saying for years. You may not be what you want to be. But thank God you're not what you used to be. Hmm. And it's so wow. easy to, to continue to look at what I'm not, like mm -hmm. I'm still not in shape or my relationship's still not where it, it was. But you may not be what you want to be, but thank God you're not what you used to be. So yeah. today, let's look about how far God has brought us. He has Good. brought you so far. Let's concentrate on that today. That's awesome. You're awesome, my friend. We love you. We want to get together again. Let's do it, okay? Thank you. And thank you for having me on. And congratulations on everything you're doing with this show. Thank you so much. Well, friends, I appreciate you for taking time to be with us today. And I know that you've been uh, sparked with uh, encouragement. And maybe you just have vision for your future. Reach out. Call Tim. I think he can help you. Because you, my friend are worth it. You have a purpose in this life and you can come back from anything that you've been through. Thanks for being here. Until next time, I'm Brenda Crouch.